President Korbelak, Vice President Nally, members of the board, thank you. Thank you for allowing me the privilege of working together with you as we forge new paths of access, equity, and excellence for our school system and our county. Thank you for giving me the honor of continuing to work alongside the incredible teachers, administrators, secretaries, custodians, support staff, and other employees who go to great lengths most people will never see in the pursuit of educational excellence. And most importantly, thank you for entrusting me with the responsibility of leading nearly 80,000 students who enter our schools every day to walk into a school, any school, and see their smiling, eager faces and inquiring young minds work at work is to draw inspiration in its purest form. I know you have seen that too, and it is just awesome. I want to acknowledge County Executive Steve Shu, who's joined us this morning. This may be the first time a sitting county executive has attended the superintendent's budget presentation, and I appreciate Mr. Shu being here as we embark on this road together. Thank you. <laughs> Education, ladies and gentlemen, is no easy profession, and it is not for the faint of heart. The work that we do every day, however, changes young lives and sets the course for our collective future. As I have seen that incredible work through the many different lenses in my nine years here, and the last five months as superintendent have provided yet another enriching optic as to how exactly we are going about the business of both creating and changing the future. From world and classical language camps in the summer that entice students to expand their linguistic and cultural horizons to invigorating science experiments in an elementary classroom on the first day of school, to internships at hundreds of businesses throughout the county via magnet and non-magnet programs, our students are being engaged and challenged like never before in the quest to heighten their curiosity and propel them forward. From the student government activities that provide hands-on experience with leadership and governance to the avid student leadership conferences to the launch of our Triple E initiative in eight elementary schools and an early childhood center in the North County cluster, we are fueling the inquisitiveness within each young mind and instilling in our students a sense of pride and accomplishment in their work. We are, to be sure, leading our students to a place where we want them to be. But we are also encouraging them to harness their internal power, to seize their own potential, and begin to chart their own noble course. From one end of the county to the other, from national blue ribbon schools like Lithicum Elementary to international baccalaureate programs at every grade level, to cutting edge STEM instruction for our youngest learners at schools like Park and Woodside Elementaries, to underwater robotics programs at schools like Shadyside Elementary and agricultural education courses at Southern High School, there is real magic happening in our classrooms. We aren't the only ones taking notice either. About an hour ago, the Maryland State Department of Education announced this year's class of six Maryland Blue Ribbon schools. Among them are Lakeshore and Severna Park Elementary schools And I am very proud to tell you that we are the only school system in the state with two winners this year. The great, thing, the great things are happening because we have people who ply their trade not just with incredible skill, but with grace, passion, dedication, and humor. People like Christina Haustian of Broadneck, Broadneck High School, our current Teacher of the Year, who inspires students and colleagues alike with compassionate dialogue aimed at creating a sense of civic conscience, not just with regard to the subject at hand, at hand but with causes like Relay for Life, the Polar Bear Plunge, and Harvest for the Hungry. People like Andre Dillard, the principal at Georgetown East Elementary School whose involvement with children extends far beyond the walls of the building and the confines of the school day. In addition to running a 375-student school, 
Andre is the Director of Educational Activities for the Eta Eta Lambda Chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity in Annapolis. His work includes involvement in a number of mentoring and support programs that help children, particularly young men of color, acquire the skills necessary for success and provide them with role models to look up to and emulate. People like Gus Gambrell, the chief custodian at Manorview Elementary School who leads a team whose work often goes unnoticed, but is crucial to creating conducive learning environments in which children can thrive. The work of Gus and his team was recognized several years ago when Manorview received a governor's citation for superior maintenance. People like Monica Lopez, a bilingual facilitator for the last eight years, who the board honored earlier this morning as its employee of the month. Monica provides an absolutely critical link between home and school for members of our burgeoning Hispanic population. She and her colleagues are more than just valuable resources to these students and their families, they are lifelines who translate documents, interpret key information at meetings, and put parents in touch with governmental and community organizations so that they can be in a better position to help and support and educate their children. And people like Joanna Espy, the technology support technician at Old Mill High School, whose technology expertise pays huge dividends in terms of helping teachers enhance instruction for students. In the last seven years, the number of devices in our schools has more than doubled as we migrate from technology-assisted to technology-infused instruction. The work of Joanna and her colleagues is essential to our mission. In addition to our employees, we are so fortunate to have the support of incredible parents and community partners. They include people like Allison Picard, who began volunteering in 2011 at Oakwood Elementary School. She soon became the PTA president there and helped to develop partnerships with Lowe's, Evergreen Jeans, and Abundant Life Church. Allison continues to serve in a variety of roles today and is one of nearly 20,000 volunteers who donated a combined 507,000 hours to our schools and students last year. As I said when I was appointed this position, the number one reason I applied for the job was the people. We are first and foremost a system about people. 82% of our operating budget goes to personnel costs, and if we don't have quality people, the right people, in the right places for our children, ladies and gentlemen, what happens in the other 18% of our organization isn't going to move our outcomes very far at all. We are indeed very fortunate to be surrounded every day by employees, parents, volunteers, and elected officials who, despite the constraints, continually rise above the challenges to meet and exceed expectations. Those challenges, however, are growing. We are nurturing a wider array of young minds than ever before, and those minds come with more expansive learning styles and needs that we must address if we are to achieve the single goal of our strategic plan to ensure that every student meets or exceeds standards and that the achievement gaps are eliminated. Over the last six years, the number of students receiving free and reduced price meals has grown by 59%. Today, more than three in 10 of our students receive federal assistance for meals. That's nearly 10,000 students more than six years ago whose families need help to meet basic needs. Over the same time period, our student population has grown by just under 8%, while the number of English language learners we educate has more than doubled. We have over 2,000 more students in our ELL programs today than we did six years ago, and we are charged with not only teaching them math, science, and social studies, but with helping them acquire basic language and socialization skills that form the cornerstone of future learning. Ladies and gentlemen, these are many of our children in the gap. They are the students who need additional services, assistance, and support to be successful. And they deserve every bit as much of our effort and attention as any other child. <laughs> our work must begin by getting children to believe that they are capable of success and that their work has value. That's the emphasis of the Room 203 challenge adopted and launched 
by our Office of Equity and Accelerated Student Achievement this year. The challenge's name comes from the popular book and film Freedom Writers, which is based on the true story of a teacher who inspired a group of disenchanted, defeated students with diverse and challenging backgrounds to believe in themselves and their ability to achieve academic success. For us, room 203 symbolizes the idea that no one will care how much you know until they know how much you care. It is genuine and heartfelt relationships that lead students of all backgrounds, interests, and abilities to a place where they feel fully valued. It is in that value, ladies and gentlemen, that we inspire students to excel. There are those who view and say we should view our school system purely as a business with a bottom line ideology that looks at singular measures of productivity and output and leaves those that don't meet standards on the outside looking in. To do so, however, betrays the fundamental mission of education, to empower all young minds, not just to see and understand the future, but to grasp it firmly in their hands and ride the promise of their potential to success. We are not, to borrow a line from a colleague, building widgets. We are nurturing and building children, all children. The contrast of business and educational theory is best summarized, I think, in a story found in a recent book by educational activist Diane Ravitch. Allow me to paraphrase. An ice cream company executive was speaking to a group of Indiana educators telling them they needed to operate more like his company. If I ran my business the way you people operate your schools, I wouldn't be in business for long, he told the teachers. Not surprisingly, the teachers reacted with sullen hostility. When he finished his speech, a teacher innocently asked about his company's method of making the best blueberry ice cream. He boasted of its super premium ingredients, nothing but the best. Then the teacher asked this question of the businessman. When you're standing on your receiving dock and you see an inferior shipment of blueberries arrive, what do you do? I send them back, he replied. The teacher jumped to her feet. That's right, she shouted, and we can never send back our blueberries. We take them big, small, rich, and poor gifted, exceptional, abused, and frightened, confident, homeless, rude, and brilliant. We take them with ADHD, junior rheumatoid arthritis, and English as their second language. We take them all, every one, and that is why it's not a business. It's a school. Our business, of course, is not about blueberries. Our business is about the heartbeats of children, and those heartbeats are wrapped in skins of all colors. Our children come in all shapes and sizes with needs we know well and ones we are just learning. From backgrounds with which we are familiar and others we can't even imagine. We serve a far, far higher purpose than to just crank out a product. That purpose, ladies and gentlemen, is the children who constitute the future of our neighborhoods, county, state, and nation. It's not to say that we shouldn't be business savvy. We are and have been. Our school system offers every resident in our county an incredible return on their investment. A study commissioned by this board last year quantified it well. Every graduating class we produce, just over 5,100 students last year, adds at least $1.8 billion to the local economy over the course of their lifetimes. Those graduates, those graduates will generate $26 million in additional county tax revenue and save the county $345 million in public costs related to health care, crime, and welfare. Our school system, quite simply, provides an extraordinary value to the residents of this county. I tell you emphatically that we are a sound investment that reaps huge economic, financial, and social dividends for every business and every resident, whether they have children in our schools or not. I am proud to also say that we are efficient stewards of the taxpayer funds provided to us by the county and state. On the business side of our operation, the strategic merger of our prescription drug and health care contracts will save our school system millions of dollars through volume-based discounts. The comprehensive dependent claims audit that we undertook last year ensures that only rightful dependents of employees are covered 
by health care benefits. Our rigorous claims payment audit, now underway, is verifying that no double billing or overlapping payments are occurring. Both efforts are designed to provide evidence of fiscal integrity and corporate responsibility. Even something as simple as lighting offers an avenue for savings. As we go about upgrading the lighting in our school gymnasiums, we are using more energy efficient fixtures and bulbs, as well as capitalizing on available utility rebates. As a result, we are breaking even on the cost of these lights after about seven months and realizing savings for the life of the fixtures after that. While the expansion of programs to meet the needs of our children, who will one day be leading the global workforce, often requires additional funding, we must be and have been able to shift money internally to better utilize it to get to where we want to go. Instead of requesting, instead of requesting additional funding, we have re redirected more than $400,000 from across our school system as we continue to design and enhance classroom lessons aligned with the new park assessments. This move also allows for extensive professional development to prepare teachers to deliver that robust curriculum. We conducted an exhaustive top to bottom examination of our Department of Curriculum and Instruction. That thorough analysis allowed us to repurpose more than $850,000 to better support students, part of more than $14.7 million we reallocated across the system. That's additional money we don't have to request from the public through this budget. We looked internally as well to launch the Pilot Triple E initiative earlier this year. This program not only provides students with additional rigorous and relevant programmatic offerings at nine schools, it also provides teachers in those schools with essential additional planning time they previously did not have at the elementary level. I'm pleased to tell you that the early results on this program have been tremendous and we'll be arranging some visits after the first of the, of the year so that you and our elected officials can see this outstanding work for yourselves. We must be cognizant, however, of the fact that the rubber band only stretches so far. Seven years of minimum level county funding coupled with rising enrollments, standards and accountability mandates have taken a toll. The fact is that our ability to help students reach the places we want them to be and continue to attract the talent necessary to make that happen will be diminished if we continue to settle for the floor instead of reaching for the ceiling. The challenges exist across our system. School secretaries, for example, staff nearly 145 positions below appropriate levels. Our custodians are asked to clean about 27,000 square feet of building space on a daily basis. 35 to 50 percent more than required in other counties. Since 2010, we have increased our overall square footage by 829,000 square feet without adding any new custodial positions. When it comes to facilities, our much discussed infrastructure backlog has reached $2 billion. While we must be forthright about the impact that funding constraints since 2008 have had on our school system, it does us no good to focus solely on the past. We must recognize where we are and chart the course ahead. We can talk for days about bygone battles with the county over funding, but it would not move our cause forward one single step. What we need is not discord, but dialogue, and a mutual and fundamental belief that together we can make education in Anne Arundel County second to none. I'd pose the same question that Robert Kennedy did years ago. He said, there are those who look at things the way they are and ask why. I dream of things that never were and ask why not. It is time, ladies and gentlemen, to talk about how we can, not why we can't. I've had the chance to sit down with Mr. Shu, and we've had some great conversation. I believe he is as committed to this mindset as I am. My hope is that our children and our county reap the benefits of our collaboration. My review of the recommendations from department heads in preparing this budget has been both exhaustive and exhilarating. In each of the thousands of lines, I've seen the faces of children. Every dollar, we in, every dollar we spend impacts a child in some way. The $1.1 billion operating budget I recommend to this board is 3.6% or just under $39 million more 
than the current year's adjusted budget. Could I make the case for needing more funding in this request? Absolutely. I would very much like to add secretary and custodial positions, for instance. However, finite resources dictate tough choices, and we must be prudent and reasonable. I believe this budget is evidence that we are both. It contains $11.8 million placeholder for employee compensation increases, which will be finalized when we conclude negotiations with all of our bargaining units. As I have said before, it is our people that will propel us forward. Department and division heads presented me with nearly $35 million in proposed program enhancements this year, and I could make a great case for every single one of them. However, we've, we had to, we've had to make difficult decisions, and I cut the list down to $10 million. Nearly 70% of these requests are focused on four key areas that I believe will most help move us, will help us, excuse me, move the needle forward in terms of student achievement. Classroom teachers to address increased enrollment, early literacy, elementary education, and the needs of our English language learners. This, ladies and gentlemen, is where we must focus our efforts to close the gaps that exist. This budget, re this budget recommendation contains $2.4 million for 33 teaching positions to partially address enrollment growth. We have nearly 6,000 more students in our classrooms today than we did six years ago. If we are serious about containing continued growth in class size, it is imperative that we add teachers to do so. I'm also requesting $2.5 million to launch the Triple E program in all 19 elementary schools in the Chesapeake, Meade, and Southern clusters, in addition to the program already in place in the North County cluster. This expansion will bring enhanced instruction to nearly 12,000 elementary students next year and provide critical planning time for more than 500 teachers. $1 million is allocated to additional early literacy programs to help get children up to grade level at an earlier age by providing increased teaching services to children in our birth to age five programs and expanding our pre-kindergarten programs. This includes 12 additional classroom and assistant positions, and while the sites have not yet been finalized, potential locations include Crofton Meadows, Lakeshore, Nantucket, Overlook, Odenton, Richard Henry Lee, Rivera Beach, and Severn Elementary Schools. This will enable us to provide additional service to another 240 youngsters across the county. I'm also requesting $850,000 to add eight English language acquisition teachers to classrooms across the county, two employees in our International Student Service Office, and three bilingual facilitators to assist the growing number of non-English speaking families in our system. These resources help many students who have experienced interrupted educations and are behind in their studies. For example, we had 15 over, 15 over age ninth graders in our ELL programs in 2010. Today, there are more than 100. When it comes to our magnet programs, we must continue to develop rigorous and relevant curricula that prepare students for cutting edge careers and a global workforce. This budget includes $1 million to continue expansion of the STEM middle school magnet programs at Old Mill Middle School South and Lindale Middle School and launch our third STEM middle school magnet program at Central Middle School next year. My recommendation also contains $739,000 to purchase automated bus routing software and hire an analyst to implement a program that we plan to run alongside our current transportation system during the upcoming school year. This will enable us to identify any areas where we can create more efficient bus routes and allow us to examine additional options with regard to school start times. I believe that this is a practical first step that will yield valuable information as we continue the discussion of later school start times. Additionally, I am requesting $4 million to strengthen our health care fund and $3.8 million to address needs of our charter and contract program. Providing quality curriculum instruction is but a part of the path to educational excellence. Our children must be educated in up-to-date facilities, and this board knows well that we have a long way to go in that regard. 
The $163.1 million capital budget recommendation I submit to you today contains funding for comprehensive renovation projects at nine schools and continues funding for pre-kindergarten and kindergarten additions, as well as open space classroom enclosures. There is more than $100 million allocated to construction projects at Savannah Park High School and Rolling Knolls, Benfield, West Annapolis Elementary Schools and design work for Manor View, High Point, Cromwell, Jessup, and Arnold Elementary Schools. There is also $11 million for pre-kindergarten and kindergarten additions at Eastport and Georgetown East Elementary Schools, as well as at West Mead Early Education Center. $6 million from gymnasium additions at Millersville and Woodside Elementary Schools, and $5 million for open space classroom enclosures at Glen Burnie High School. Ladies and gentlemen, every day in our class, our students face challenges. Some of them are pretty steep. It is our collective duty to lift our children up, equip them for success, and propel them forward. It is our duty, if you will, to elevate all students and eliminate all gaps. We must do it through passion, support, and creativity, and through access, equity, and excellence. And we, school system, county government, state government, parents, students, community, and business partners must do it together. We all have critical roles to play. The path will not always be easy, but the achievement of our children is the priceless prize we must relentlessly pursue every day. Thank you.